As an undergrad, it can be pretty stressful dealing with all the elements that go into a good dental school application. So in this video, we'll be going over that timeline of undergrad and what you should be doing every year of it to make sure you're ready to go and you have the best application possible. So stay tuned. and welcome to another One Mission DMD video. My name is Teham Saud and I'm a second year dental student. This channel was created for anyone interested in a career in dentistry, no matter what part of the journey you may be at. So if you think you can benefit from that, please consider subscribing and liking this video for future content. Okay, this is an announcement. This is geared for everyone that's about to apply for the class of 2026 and beyond. I've been waiting a really long time to do this, and now that I finally have the time, I'm really excited to share this content with you guys. So if you're a pre-dental student and you are about to apply soon, you definitely don't want to miss out because everything that goes into the dental school application and everything after, like interviews, I'll be covering that in depth. For those of you that are hitting that subscribe button right now, make sure to hit the notification bell next to it so that you can get notified for whenever new content is brought out for you guys. So you're a freshman in undergrad and you're being asked by all your counselors and advisors what you wanna do and they'll just like throw things at you and you don't really know what's going on. So this is the time where you definitely want to, from the beginning, Google the list of requirements for dental school. So some of them require biochem, some require anatomy, some require genetics. You have to go and research those individual schools to find out what they require. And a good resource to use is the Idea Guide to Dental School. I'll have the link for it at the bottom. I talked about it a lot of times in all my videos, so definitely check that out so you know exactly what you need to take. As a freshman, first things first, you really got to develop good study habits. You definitely want to talk to upperclassmen that took those classes already and ask them what you may need to do to ensure that you do well in the class. As you're figuring out your study methods and figuring out how to do well in your classes, you might want to start joining pre-dental clubs at your school. I wouldn't recommend joining more than one or two organizations at this point because you just got into school and there's a huge learning curve. So definitely try to focus on your classes and then as time permits, engage in activities and organizations. So there's not much more you should be doing in undergrad to be completely honest because you really need to make sure you do well because how you perform in your classes in your first year is gonna trickle down to the subsequent years and mold you as an undergrad student. So now you're a sophomore, pretty much have to do the same thing you did as a freshman, but you'll start realizing that the time it takes to study for classes might be more than you did before as a freshman. If you're continually doing well in your classes, then you might wanna start increasing the amount of on-campus organizations that you wanna be a part of. So you can join like relief organizations or religious organizations or sporting clubs or anything like that, just with anything that you have a passion and interest for. As long as you're doing well in your classes, there should be no reason why you aren't doing those things. This would also be a great time to start shadowing dentists. And the reason for that is because when you apply as a dental school applicant, they really wanna see you have experience and shadowing and volunteering hours. So starting with this stuff early on in your undergrad, so you're not rushing around in your junior and senior year to rack up those hours. And alongside that, you wanna know if it's something that you actually like to do. There's so many people that pre-med, pre-dental, pre-optometry, and then once they start working, they feel like that's not what they wanna do. So that's an additional reason for why you should probably start shadowing early, just so you can get an idea as to how the field that you're interested in is actually gonna be for you on a day-to-day -day basis. Additionally, just become active in your community because that is what really allows you to be a well-rounded applicant. And some schools actually require some amount of community service hours. So like the prerequisite coursework is kind of different for each school, these requirements are gonna be different for each school too. So you have to really look into each individual school's requirements to find out what you need to be doing. One word of advice, even if you're fortunate enough to have your undergraduate education paid for, try getting a job. I know it's not necessary, but the reason I'm saying this is because it really teaches you a lot and allows you to manage a lot of things ongoing at the same time. All of your classes are gonna have deadlines and dates that you have to meet and adding work onto it can really teach you how to be self-disciplined and manage your time wisely. And not only that, it's gonna teach you how to deal with money. And 
it's just different from when like if you're given ten dollars from someone versus you working and making ten dollars there's a different psychological effect of you spending ten dollars that you made versus ten dollars you got from someone else and my dad really taught me that as a kid and it was something that really helped me so i think it's something that can help anyone actually so try to get a job and manage everything so you can kind of get a feel for how the real world is going to be for you and not only that it's going to teach you a lot about yourself if you have a job that you have to talk to people about it'll teach you a lot about yourself what are things that you can do to have a better effective communication with people around you so there's a lot of benefits from it okay so junior year this is hands down one of the most critical parts of your undergrad this is typically the year where everyone starts stressing about their classes more than they ever have because pre-meds pre-dents and pre-ops all the pre-health students are starting to take organic chemistry and physics and all these classes that take a lot more time to study than other classes did. And you'll soon realize that all the time you put in freshman year and sophomore year to study for these classes, you have to do double, triple, quadruple the amount of studying. So you really have to do way more studying than you think you do to get the really good grades that you really need to be getting. This is a really good time to start implementing outside course material into your studying process for whatever classes you're taking organic chemistry and physics and all those all those highly demanding courses there's a lot of resources out there to help you there's Khan Academy course saver YouTube has so many resources out there for everyone and the thing with course saver is is that it was actually developed for MCAT and DAT preparation a lot of younger underclassmen told me in undergrad that they really benefited from those videos because of the practice problems and the way it's very simple and to the point so for undergrad, definitely incorporate those outside of class resources because it just allows another person to explain things. Maybe they explain it in a different way and it can click better. So definitely look into those. And this is probably recommended to be done in sophomore year, but make sure you have good relationship with your professors. Because at the end of the day, that also goes into another element of the dental school application, which is letters of recommendation. So if you make sure that you have a good relationship and it starts with things so simple as just going into review your exams with them, you know, just going over what your mistakes were, what you can improve on, study techniques, stuff like that. And you just doing that is going to allow the conversation to open up about what you're studying, what you want to do after undergrad. So they'll know what your goals are. And when you bring up the fact, when you bring up the question of them, can they write you? A strong letter of recommendation they'll kind of get they'll kind of already know who you are and then they'll just want you to supplement all of that stuff with a personal statement which we'll also tackle in the future video now junior year is also the year where you should start thinking about signing up for the dental admission test so you definitely want to make sure that you take the test after you take organic chemistry once you're done with that that would be the great that would be a great time to look into taking it because that is probably one of the last courses that you're gonna have to worry about that will be tested on the exam. So once you sign up, I definitely recommend checking out the video I made regarding my DAT schedule. I'll link the video in the description or you can just top the corner right over here. All right, so senior year of undergrad. This is probably the time where you have a good idea where you stand as a dental school applicant. At this point, you wanna make sure you have already taken the DAT or are scheduled to take it quite soon, that you've taken all the prerequisite courses that are required by most dental schools and the ones that you're interested in applying to make sure that you gathered at least two to three professors that are willing to write you a letter of recommendation two things try your best to make sure to have them from two to three science professors and that they write you strong letters of recommendation not just saying you got an a in the class other things that they can talk about and that's why maintaining those good relationships with those professors is so critical now in senior year this is the time where you should definitely be focusing on writing a good personal statement and the reason for that is is because if you're still trying to take the dat and write a personal statement and get letters of recommendation and make sure you're done with all your classes all in senior year it's a tall order to accomplish and that's why dividing everything up in all the years of undergrad is really efficient and allows you to just focus on certain things at a time an additional reason for getting all this stuff done on time is because if you have your ad SAS application completed before June or July, then you can have all of your supplemental applications done early. Now, what are supplemental applications? So when you send in your 
initial application to dental schools. They respond to you and say they got everything, thank you very much, but now you need to write an additional essay, you need to pay an additional fee, you need to do whatever. Whatever they ask you to do, you need to have all that done and you can't be evaluated as an applicant to be invited for an interview unless you have the supplemental applications done. So there's definitely a little bit of time that has to pass from the time you initially submit your application. So that's why it's super important to have everything done, preferably sometime the month the application opens, which is usually May, which is usually May or June so that you can finish your supplemental so that you can be one of the first people that are invited for an interview. So oh, this is definitely gonna be a stressful time. You're gonna be constantly checking your emails like every single day to make sure that you have everything completed and if schools are getting back to you or not. But you definitely don't wanna forget that you're still in undergrad. All the classes you're taking, everything you're doing is still gonna be taken into account by dental schools once that stuff is completed. You don't wanna start slacking and not putting in the same effort that you've been doing. Alongside that, you definitely wanna continue shadowing, volunteering, dental assisting, working some type of job so that you can maintain busy and not constantly be glued to your computer checking emails every single day. Now, a lot of times during undergrad, especially in senior year, this is where undergrad students start questioning if they're even cut out for getting into dental school. I promise you, there's always something you can do to increase your chances. Whether it be a low GPA, a low DAT, or lack of experience in dentistry, those are things that you can always improve on as an applicant. And if that means delaying your graduation, or if that means taking additional classes in post back after graduation, or enrolling in a master's, or retaking the DAT, or working as a dental assistant, all that stuff is gonna help you and I actually covered what you can do in a post back whether it be an official post back or a self put together post back that you just made that you just took classes on your own for or doing a master's go ahead and check out this video where i talk about what i did in my gap year and the classes that i took in my post back and if you feel like you've done all those things and you need to increase your exposure to science classes even more go ahead and check out this video where i talked about doing a master's and if it's worth your time or not Anyways, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys were able to take something from it and apply it into your journey getting into dental school. You definitely don't want to miss out on the next few videos, as I said before. Anything you can think of regarding the dental school application and after you submit it, it's going to be covered all in the next few series of videos that we got going on. And I definitely wanted to have all this content out a few months before the dental school application opens so that you guys are ready to go and you can have all the information that you guys need to have. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.